Hey there, I'm Chris Kroll, Editor-in-Chief of Solar Builder Magazine. Today we're talking about home energy storage. There are a lot of manufacturers entering the grid-tied home battery space, and one intriguing contender is Blue Eddy, which has built a brand in the portable battery market, but now has some more robust options for solar pros. Here uh, to make the pitch today is Blue Eddy Sales Director, Brian Shercliffe. Blue Eddy uh, has really been, you know, known for selling direct to consumers, outdoorsy customers um, for, you know, road trips, off-grid events, stuff like that. Um, I guess give us that rundown. You know, what defines the the Blue Eddy uh, battery brand, uh, you know, to this point for those that are maybe unfamiliar? We're really well known in the consumer space. We manufacture anywhere between, you know, 200 watt hour to uh, about 18,000 watt hour portable batteries. And these are ones that you can take out camping, use them in emergency situations. You can charge them with, uh, you know, portable solar panels. One thing I've wondered though, is does your background in that space change how you approach the solar plus storage home backup segments that, you know, our solar installers are traditionally playing in, you know, uh, do you differentiate your product from, you know, others that have you know been in this space? Yes. The typical solar battery inverter, I have one installed in my house for the last few years uh, by a big brand, comes from the, the rooftop solar, commercial and industrial kind of solar down. So that technology that, that's meant for like utility and, and commercial, it's miniaturized and that's what is available to the residential. Ours is the opposite. And we, what we're able to do is take our expertise in the uh, the smaller scale, the miniature scale, and upgrade it. So instead of having multiple components that make sense on a large commercial building, or you know, if you have an open field, you've got, you know, the inverter, you got the battery, you got some switching devices. They're all separate devices. If anyone fails, and you know, I guess they can go back and replace that. What we what we were able to do was miniaturize all that into one unit with stackable batteries that is already kitted you're able to install it within a very short amount of time. You don't have to be an expert in like how to crimp cables or, you know, trying to figure out, oh, do I need a zero gauge wire or a double gauge wire or whatever it is. Okay, so you touched on it there. And I, I wanted to dig deeper into the EP900. This is uh, the 7.6 kilowatt modular home energy storage system you have. It is scalable from 9.9 .9 to 19.8 kilowatt hours. It can be connected to solar. It has a nine kilowatt PV input. Uh, you can connect a generator to it. And I was hoping you could walk us through some of the nuances. When I'm talking to installers, especially um, maybe installers or electricians that typically don't do solar, they're looking at our unit and, and the, the way it's installed is very similar to say a Generac or a whole home generator. And they understand how that works. Yeah, this is the EP900 with two batteries. And so that is the hybrid inverter. So it's the only all contained mid device that I know of on the market. First thing you're going to want to do is, you know, take off this cover, torque down a, a significant bolt right there and, uh, you know, daisy chain your, your batteries. So this is what we call the Amphenol. They're, they all come, it's all the same length. Inside of there, you can see the connector. It is a large connector for a lot of amps that just snaps in there. And so once you hear the snap, you know you have a seal tight, you know, watertight connection. It's not going to pull back out. And actually to get it back out, you have to squeeze something. And then uh, what we call BMS, that's how the batteries talk to each other. We use um, simple DIN ports. This is kind of another kind of feature that probably comes more from the consumer space. We want to make these as simple as possible for the end user. Same thing with our, this is the Internet of Things device. It's Bluetooth. It's a, basically a modem. So we have two MPPT trackers. They already have the MC4 connectors on there. And each one of these is able to track, um, you know, 3000 watts and 6000 watts. So this is more than capable to, you know, run a, you know, about a 10, 11 kW solar array, quick disconnect. So when that's on, it's going to be in this position. If you ever have a need to shut it down, you just turn it off. Once this is all said and done, you would have this installed with a cover and you'd see a, a light status, green, yellow, or red. To turn it on, once it's all connected, you just 
Now I'll show you the AC side, and this is probably the, the biggest difference in my opinion. Now if we done the same sort of snap connectors for our consumption meters, uh, we even have a, like a USB drive for quick firmware updates. Uh, this is a microgrid device. So we have the ability to control other devices like a generator. So we can kick on a generator if it is programmed to do that. And this is where the magic happens. So this is the switch. So we have an input and an output. And so we're able to charge and feed back electricity to the grid through this connection. And then oh. through here, that would be going to your, your critical panel, your load, or, or if you had an ATS into the, the generator port of your automatic transfer switch if you were doing a whole home. This is covered with a device like that where you'd have the conduit coming mm -hmm. in there. Uh, and then a cover goes over all of this after it is commissioned and ready to go. Another thing to mention is our battery, even though it looks like it's in series, it's actually in parallel and it is not low voltage. A lot of the other batteries use 48 volts. We use 99. Can you explain like what's the what, what's the significance of operating at a higher voltage? Amps cause heat, right? So you want to have higher voltages to be able to carry more current at lower amps. So you're not generating as much heat with the resistance. That's why those cables are very thick. The Amphenol connector is a metal all around. And the battery with the BMS even, it's looking at it as four independent batteries as opposed to here's battery one, two, three, four. They're all draining and charging at the exact same rates. So the, the higher voltage just enables us to charge it and discharge it safer and for higher capacities like nine kilowatts instead of say four. For an outdoor installation, are there any restrictions like in terms of needing a, a cover over it? Or I guess where, where, where do we typically see the system installed? Most of the feedback that we've gotten is they are installing it indoors in their garage, basements, the ones that are installing them outside, we have a power shelter. It looks very similar, in my opinion, to a garden shelter. Yeah, other than the word Blue Eddie on it, uh, there's nothing on it that says, uh, hey, you know, there's a battery in here. Now, when you get it installed, if your local utility requires you to have stickers, you better have the right stickers on there so that, you know, the fire department knows, hey, this is where the battery is. How does this solution function in like a time of use um, scenario or something with, you know, in California with NEM 3.0. So the time of use is extremely simple for us to implement. Any homeowner can easily program the app. So we use an application. It's the same application that we use for our portable units. You can do this through Bluetooth. So you can directly connect to the unit. If the Wi-Fi goes down, the cloud goes down, uh, you can still access our unit directly. Also, we have a, a lot of uh, people that use this off-grid where there, there is no internet. Do you think there's potential for installers, you know, once they're pitching the their rooftop solar system and trying to then, you know, also add a battery, for them to go with a portable battery version and just thinking like, hey, if you just need a battery for backup, just uh, sign up for one of these, you know, Blue Eddies that you can hook up in a pinch type of thing. Is that is that like a direction we're starting to see? Absolutely. I have heard of this happening. I'm not 100% sure if you could roll the battery into any financing, but maybe it's a, a promotional item. Hey, you know, we're offering a free, you know, three kilowatt hour battery, kind of sweeten the deal for them to sign, hey, sign today, you get two batteries, or <laughs> whatever it is, you know. Uh, this would be a very affordable way to, you know, offer the backup solution that people, I think they really want that. Uh, everyone that I've talked to, you know, personally in their homes, talking about solar, sometimes they know that, you know, going just solar doesn't offer backup power, but oftentimes they are surprised this would be a good way of you know kind of bridging that gap yeah like i because i keep thinking of markets where there is still good uh solid like kind of net metering payback and you're going solar for just kind of the to sell back to the grid and your grid power maybe goes out you know for a couple hours every year like it's not that huge of a deal i think a lot of installers if they're not already offering this they they should think about talking about transfer switches and generator inputs uh, especially here in the Gulf states, 
a lot of people have generators. The that person that has solar very likely has a, already has a gas generator. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't have, you know, sort of, you know, installed NEC up to code transfer switches, things like that. Uh, I think you would be doing everyone a service by saying, hey, you know, we can add on a transfer switch outlet. And then this could also be the same outlet that we use for our portable units. Well, very good. Uh, Brian, uh, thanks for taking so much time to stop by and make the pitch today. Absolutely. Thank you. And uh, if there's any other questions or anyone wants to reach out to me, go ahead and, and give me a call.